I often get asked about the contents of the bookshelf behind me. So I thought today you might be interested to see which books I use the most and which ones I would recommend that you add to your library. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. I teach pattern making and fitting to people who love to sew. Join me today to see my favorite pattern making and fitting books and learn why I think they're so good. So the first book I would love for you to have in your library to highly suggest that you get this if you are interested in drafting your own personal blocks is this one by Winifred Aldrich called Metric Pattern Cutting. Now this particular version is the women's wear version, but you can also see that she has men's version as well. So this is men's pattern cut cutting. She also has a lingerie, I believe. Um, so that's something that you can look for some of her other books. So the author, Winifred Aldrich, is what you'll look for, and she'll have a list of books that you can go to. I like this method of drafting better than the one that she's put into the menswear one. This particular menswear edition actually drafts the patterns with the seam allowances already included. I find this kind of pulls away from the accuracy of the pattern, so I prefer not to draft with seam allowances. Now inside this, you're going to find all different um, drafts. So you'll find the bodice draft, you'll find a sleeve draft. A note on the sleeve draft here, I've tried this several times, this particular sleeve draft really does not work very well, no matter what size that you are drafting in. I'm not sure why I have never had success creating a sleeve that works well with this particular block. But the bodice block, the pant block that's in here is all really good. It does have information about drafting for individual figures, and it also has some information about um, fitting. Very limited information, and of course, all based on black and white sketches not necessarily accurate um, depictions of the pattern alterations. So those are some drawbacks to this particular book. It does have lingerie and knitwear, I believe, as well. Um, that's something that uh, you can actually dive into. There is some styling information as well. In other words, how to create collars, how to create a flared skirt. But you can see here that the information is quite sparse. So you have to draw a lot of your references from the little illustrations yourself because the descriptions of how to do something is very, very limited. But all in all, this is a really great great book if you want to start drafting to your personal measurements. It will give you an introduction to uh, pattern design, um, but it's not going to be very, very revealing in, ter in terms of it doesn't give you all the steps. It gives you a general idea of how to do something. Now, once you have your basic blocks, this is the book for you. So this is the best book if you want to learn how to create patterns from your basic block patterns. Now, the reason I say that is because it has so much information about different styling techniques, how to manipulate your pattern in order to get many, many, many different styles. You can actually see I've got lots of little post-it notes that I've created tabs with to sort of always have reminders of how to do things because it's hard to keep it all in your head. So I, I often will come back to this book. Once again, very similar to any pattern making book that you'll find, there's always missing steps and little fine tuning things that you will not find in a book. It is usually an instructor that will give you all the really, really fine points about how to really perfect patterns or to create and manipulate patterns. But this is a really great guide and is used in actually most fashion schools, I believe now. There are basic block drafts in this particular book, but what I found when creating them is that they require usually too many measurements of the body, which tends to Kind of complicate the drafting process. I find that when you require too many measurements, it really does complicate the draft. And I actually created this draft with a class at one point early on when I first started teaching. And we actually had to switch over to a different draft method because this one 
everyone was coming up with just the most bizarre looking drafts simply because of how many measurements are required. And as I said, it's very, very difficult to take body measurements accurately, especially when there are a lot of them. So I found that uh, halfway through the class, we actually had to abandon our drafts that were from this book, and we ended up um, creating new ones based on the Winifred Aldrich one that I just showed you. So another thing about this, this particular book, it does go a little bit deeper into um, kind of adjusting the block to make sure that the sleeve fits into the armhole and things like that. So there's definitely more information about um, pattern manipulation and a little, even a little bit more about fitting. But again, fitting is not the primary focus of this book. It is really about styling basic block patterns into different types of styles. So really big book and I really highly recommend this if you want to dive into more pattern making methods. Now this book is probably the most influential book that I found on how to actually fit garments. This is a really old book and I think I bought it, I bought it many, many years ago. The author is Natalie Bray and it is called Dress Fitting. And of course it is only for dresses because of the era in which this particular book was created. It's obviously been reprinted here, um, and it, it, it does focus entirely on, um, on women's wear, bodice, sleeves, and dresses. I don't even think there's anything in here about pants, and if there is, it is very, very, very minimal. But I want to tell you why this particular book was so influential, and it was because of the uh, writing that this particular author has about these preliminary modeling exercises. Now, what she does is goes through basically a draping process, but she explains how to recognize the fitting needs of the drape by looking at the grain line and understanding where the body needs shape. So this is why I call this the most influential book for me on how to fit. There are things in this book that um, purely gave me the understanding to, to really dive into how to actually fit something and how to get it to fit well. So that's why I love this book. She does have a drafting book as well, but again, it's another book that I tried the draft out of and it just did not work for me. And I found it really difficult to even work for um, my standard mannequin. So that tells me that it's probably not gonna be applicable to a wide variety of people, which is why I still love the Winifred Aldridge drafting book. So you can see here, she walks you through some uh, modeling exercises, which are basically draping exercises. And this is where you sort of understand how the, how the fabric needs to be manipulated on the body in order to create the shape that you need. So that's why I love this book. So it does um, give you uh, lots of direction and ideas about fitting, um, which I love, love, love. It shows you how to drape a collar, which is really uh, informative as well. So the only thing that I would say about this book, it is not an easy read. And that's because there are a lot of abbreviations in the text of this book. And if you're like me and are not good at remembering what NP might mean or what um, SPN might mean, then um, it makes reading or understanding the text in the book a little bit difficult. So once again, this is one of the books I would highly recommend for having in your fitting library um, because it will give you information that you probably haven't even seen anywhere else. An old book, but a really, really important one, I think. Now the next book I would recommend, and I know many of you have heard me talk about this one many times before, and it's this book by Sarah Veblen and it is called The Complete Photo Guide to Perfect Fitting. The great thing about this one is she goes through how to use balance lines to assess fit. And the other great thing is there's actually, you know, photographs, which does make it a little bit easier to understand, you know, what she's talking about in the steps to fitting that she has here. Now, Sarah Veblen and I have a similar method of, uh, of using balance lines to help you fit. 
Sarah Veblen doesn't necessarily put them in at the bust, waist, or hip level. This is not something that, that she worries about. Think about the balance lines being the crosswise and lengthwise grain of the fabric. And you can put them in and around the waist, in and around the hip, or in and around sort of the upper back or upper front part of the bodice to help you sort of assess. You end up creating a fitting grid to help you assess the, the garment. And this is how I use it too, but I like to put it at the bust, waist, and hip so that I know that that pattern or those shaping in that pattern is aligned to those areas on your body. Granted, when you get to sort of more dynamic styling, the balance lines become more difficult to uh, determine on the pattern if they're not already on the pattern. That's why uh, the patterns that I create for any of my Fitting Essentials courses, I always uh, put the balance lines on the pattern itself so that you know exactly where it is um, going to be on the garment. So that's sort of kind of how I think. But this particular book is really, really great in sort of demonstrating how to use those balance lines and how to um, kind of assess uh, the sample for fitting and, and ways that you can adjust the sample in order to, to make it fit. And the great thing is, as I said, it's on a real body and it's photographed quite nicely. So it gives you some ideas to uh, help you fit. Now this is the last fitting book that I'm going to tell you about. This one is called Fitting and Pattern Alteration, a multi-method approach to the art and style selection, fitting and alteration. This is the third edition. I don't know if there's another one. I think this is the most recent edition. I highly recommend that you have this in your library. And that's simply because it has, it represents a lot of things inside this book. Uh, it goes through how to measure your pattern and how that pattern measurement applies to the pattern. So you know I talk about this a lot in my classes. It goes through all the different possibilities of uh, the, the different potential fitting issues that you might have. Um, so I really, really highly recommend it. There is a section here on the uh, what we call the crotch curve. I think they call it a bowl. They tell you how to create it and uh, then how to use it as well. I found these instructions a little bit lacking. So when I created one for myself using the a flexible ruler, which is what they suggest that you do, what I found is that I couldn't actually repeat the process. So in other words, the more times I tried to take the shape of my crotch curve from my body to paper, the curve changed every single time I tried. And so when something is so inconsistent, I don't find it as valuable as other methods might be. But I know many people have had success with this particular method. Um, maybe they're just not as uh, particular or maybe they are more particular and were able to kind of recreate the shape of their body it's a very, very expensive book. It's considered, I would call it a textbook on fitting. And um, the other drawback I think would be that it's all just black and white drawings, which means that it's kind of a lot of things are open to interpretation, but honestly a very, very good book to understand how to uh, manipulate the pattern for any specific fitting issue. What I, where I find most people do struggle with fitting is more identifying the issue that it has rather than actually understanding how to correct it. But again, if you are struggling with that, by all means, there are some great illustrations that will give you ideas on how to adjust your pattern. So once again, a pretty big book, Fitting and Pattern Alteration, very, very good book to have in your library. You will not regret the money you spend if you actually take the time to dive into it and, and read it, uh, read the information on how to use the book. Because without reading the information on how to use the book, you're gonna find that the information that they have here in the uh, pattern adjustment area is it's a little bit muddy. You won't sort of understand how to use the, the information that's here if you don't actually read the first part of the book. So definitely study the book and, and don't just use it as a quick reference oh, I have this problem, so I'm going to do this. Dive into this book a little bit more deeply and you'll be able to gather a lot of information from it.
I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my sewing library. If you have books that you love and I haven't mentioned them here, send me a message. I'm always open to hearing about new pattern making and fitting resources. Next week, I'll be sharing my favorite pattern making and fitting tools. I hope you'll tune in. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.